The techno parties did not stop. They started 11 o'clock till in the morning 6, 7, 8, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Sometimes there were parties like 36 hours. You know. People want to escape from the, from the real world, you know, from the reality. It's like a therapy. Yeah. They want to enter this door and uh, want to find a world they really like. You know. They wanted to feel protected from profession, from, from this pressure. You know. They can't stand this pressure, so they get lost. If you can make it to be in this kind of parties, then you discover something special. close the door and the only thing that stays is it was somehow great. You do not remember any melody line or something. It was just a great feeling and you enter the, the reality again. But you find good other spaces, breakfast cafes, parks, where the, the bridge from the club to the reality is not so difficult. You know? And this you only find in Berlin. Changes always happened in Berlin's history, especially after the Second World War. So there was this law that you don't have to go to this military service when you're living in West Berlin. So if you were clever, then you finished school in West Germany and just left your hometown and went to West Berlin. So Berlin became in the 80s and very, very political and very alternative. We had the extremely strong gay scene and a very creative underground scene here that is, was not based on people that was born in Berlin. It was a kind of artistic freedom situation in Berlin. Everything was possible. And when the wall came down, the atmosphere was burning. The wall falls down and like a small scene in West Berlin takes over huge empty spaces in East Berlin. So they celebrate the freedom. That's one big historical accident. I mean, nobody could have anticipated anything like that. The wall coming down, East Berlin being totally unexplored, um, people going into houses, making warehouse parties, lower living costs, only in this environment you can actually have a club culture and a music culture like this growing. This is basically what made it all possible. In the first three years there were no control by authorities, so we could do what we wanted to do. Back then, in 1990, in East Berlin, you didn't have normal in that sense because the city wasn't normal. Squatters like us, on the one hand, we represented freedom. On the other hand, we were also scary and, and unusual. I mean, squat there, there hadn't been no squatters in, the, in East Germany. I mean, it was an unusual sight and an unusual attitude to just move into a house and say, that's our house. what we could do what we wanted to because the police didn't give a shit or didn't know a shit. Crazy stuff, it, uh, but that's the way it was in 91. Part of the experience was looking for the spots where the party is, We're running through this empty city looking for a party. Everything was about sharing, you know. It was a very friendly 
uh, atmosphere and relations between the people. You know? It didn't matter if you come from East Berlin or West Berlin. You know? The music really did play an important role for this reunion, you know. Yeah, and it was really wild. The reason why I came here and the whole feeling the, the city had, it was inspiring, like this, this dark uh, attitude, the dirt, the grey buildings, that was definitely inspiring and it uh, made me what I am today. The real heyday of squatting, the real summer of squatting, ended in, 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 in November 1990, when the city started to kick out people. But the attitude of squatting remained. I mean, the whole history of techno in Berlin in the 90s is unthinkable without this attitude that people learned in the summer of 1990. You can take houses and do with them what you want to. That's where the Tresor people got their ideas and energy from, that they had this huge, amazing space they just found. We found this old vault, the Trezor Club, in the heart of the city. We discovered it like in 91. We came in and it was untouched over uh, nearly 45 years. You know. And we discovered it it was like opening a pyramid, you know, it was a big adventure. And I felt it immediately was dedicated for something special. We could transform this space and it became a symbol, you know, for the uh, reunion of kids from East and West Berlin, you know. It was a perfect space for this new adventure called Techno. I think that lots of people who were in Berlin at, this, at that time and who went to Tresor or to other clubs, that you had the feeling, okay, this is our new beginning. That was a very, very, very strong feeling lots of people shared. The Tresor Club was a long time illegal and every fucking taxi driver knew about the Tresor Club. You don't need to give an address. You say Tresor and you, they, they brought you there. Back then it was like all the freaks. And um, I felt attracted to that, more to the music maybe. I felt attracted to, to, the, to, the, to the people that were there, to the situation that uh, you had the feeling only you know about it. And um, that was something that yeah, made me feel special and I wanted to be part of it. I think the idea of escaping from where you have been, getting rid of the old heavy feelings, is, uh, uh, that was like that was like the mood a lot of people had. You could go out every night. Uh, it was just parties on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, open end. Um, that was really it was a really nice time. You have like girls, guys, gays, all dancing together. No matter like sexual orientation or anything, they're just like enjoying the music and that's that's the whole point. I don't really know when this 90s German adventure changed into this Berlin that we have right now, which is like an international kind of hotspot. But I know, I remember the, 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 the moment I realized it. And that was 2004, and I was standing in the line of a club. I realized, wow, all these people around me speak different languages. Nobody speaks German. In the early days, I think we had only 20% tourists, and the rest came from Germany or mainly from Berlin. Today we have 60 up to 70, 80 percent tourists and foreigners and uh, that's why we also have many more clubs. We have the clubs in the in the tourist guides yeah. and as we as a club it's at first you're like oh cool you're we're in a tourist guide but then you end up everybody who's never heard about techno for about electronic music in general just 
turns up at the club and then you have this strange mixture of people that actually come from a underground culture background they meet people that have never been to to a club before in their life this this is why we have um, selection at the door separating the ones that themselves wouldn't like the club we, we make a decision for them actually because they, they just don't fit, they, they've never experienced this culture and it kills the vibe inside if you have too many of them inside. At the moment we have to take care a little bit that not too many uh, um, stupid people come into this scene. You know? Like just drinking and uh, getting lost and like uh, in Mallorca, like in Balaman, you know, like the Germans go to New York. This is uh, this cheap tourism. Today I think the club scene is more like an industry, you know? it works like an industry. It became a business, techno became a business in Berlin. Absol absolutely, we are part of this whole uh, creative industry. In Berlin it got more professional, yeah, of course. People like starting labels, starting businesses, whatever, merchandise and everything, and it got more serious. I basically think that everyone that was doing illegal things, he don't want it to hide anymore, he don't want it to run anymore. He wanted to have the great sound system that you don't need to build up and build down after the party. Once you do something uh, crazy, at a certain point you want to establish it and make it legal. And make a living out of it. I think it's getting more and more international, which is really good for the club industry, in a way. Of course, the real Berliners who are really proud to be Berliners try to hide more and more the big marketplaces. Yeah? You see a trend in Berlin that is going more and more to pop-up venues just for a couple of weeks or also this outdoor events. Now the government becomes interested in, in club life. They say to protect it, they want to promote it, to, to push it a little, they want to promote it internationally. You can get support from, from the government. They try to get tourists and especially investors to town because there's so much creativity going on to actually sell the city. But in the end, it's, this is my true belief, it's only meant to to pull investors, to pull the big money to town. And when the big money comes, as we already said, club scene is the first thing that has to leave. But still, you find new spots every week here. Berlin still um, offers many secret spaces. You know, and young kids find them, discover them and start a new thing. The gaps where the wall was uh, are still not filled and there are still areas that are to be discovered. And these areas are not in the suburbs, these areas are still in the center. So this is the, the club, Renato. You know, we have very many different rooms in this building, which is just a normal residential building. And yeah, as you can see, it's almost untouched. <laughs> As we got this, you know, we started looking around in the house, we found this first floor and we were like, wow, this has, was the most exciting place we saw. Now let's do something here. And we started to do some parties and uh, we had fun. And what somehow it's the charm of Renato is that it has so many small rooms so you can get really lost inside of the building. On a big party we have like four floors, they all are totally equal. So you can change the room like every two or three hours and that's why the, the party doesn't get boring here. It's the whole atmosphere like to hang out, to, to hide away sometimes, you know, like that's the special thing about Renato. Ooh, welcome to the dungeon. <laughs> I think like the history of Berlin in the last 20 years is like a novel. I mean, you have a great 
entry, you know, it's like an emptiness, it's, 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 an, it's an adventure, and then it, it gets more mature in a way. It gets more complicated, it gets more complex, and it gets more successful, and it gets more uh, uh, colorful. Sometimes if something is established, it starts to suck. And this is not what, is, what happened here. All the established nightclubs that are legal are owned by people that started illegal parties and became legal. Which means the owners of the clubs, they really know what it's about. This scene is so much bigger than people out there can imagine, you know. They're thinking we're opening this door at 11 in the evening and um, doing a strange party and the next day it's all over. It's a little, little culture and a little economy. It's not common for German cities to be that attractive for the rest of the world. It's a very, very new situation for a German city to be like the hotspot. When I walk through the streets in Berlin, still up to now, I have the feeling I'm on the pulse of the present. You know, it's happening here. Berlin will also stay very amazing for the next 20 years. I, I'm here now 30 years, or longer 30 years. And I still think it's every day. It's a new life, it's a new adventure. <laughs>